Josh, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 times the wrong person won at WrestleMania, WWE WrestleMania. It's been some times where you you gotta question the overall booking of a particular person, particular wrestler, after they've done this amazing build up for them just to have them lose at WrestleMania. I think we've all seen it quite <laughs> uh, frequently especially of later years uh, of the recent WrestleManias, just questionable booking decisions on why did that person win? I don't think that person should have won. So WrestleMania is supposed to be a culmination of these big feuds that have been building over the year. And um, a lot of times we don't really get that satisfactory ending of that story. It usually just ends in like uh, confusion. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support, man, on the channel. And um, let's get right into this bad boy. You may think that wins and losses <clears throat> don't matter, but do. on occasion, they really do. Like at WrestleMania, for example, where a big loss on the grandest stage can seriously hamper a wrestler's career and even taint their overall legacy. Mm -hmm. WWE has been guilty of putting someone over at the expense of someone else that fans really want and or a performer that simply needs or could greatly benefit from getting their hand raised more than the other person when it comes to their signature events. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's glaringly obvious in the moment, other times it looks misjudged only with the benefit of hindsight. Often, the more you think about it, the worse it gets. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 times the wrong person won at WrestleMania. Join us. I'm willing to bet they're going to have Asuka in the list. They had her as the thumbnail. Asuka definitely should have beat Charlotte. I don't care what no one says. She should have beat Charlotte. That's, I'm going to leave that at. I'm going to leave that there. I know this going to Number 10, the Triple H versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 29. Considering he was coming in with huge hype and a mm -hmm. big fat contract, do you would think that WWE would want to protect Brock Lesnar following his return in April 2012? You would think wrong, of course, because he lost his first match back against yep. John Cena, but then managed to beat Triple H in a no DQ match at SummerSlam. But guess who needed his win back? The game beat the Beast at WrestleMania 29 and a no holds barred match where Triple H's in ring career was on the line. That in ring career saw him wrestle about twice a year. Yeah. Rock needed the win much, much more than his opponents here. He should have either retired Hunter, since this is wrestling and it could easily be reversed later on if need be, or, you know, they could have just not added the career on the line caveat in the. That would have been good. <clears throat> that would have been good. <laughs> uh, ultimately, he didn't need that win. Like, it. it Triple H didn't need to win. I'm I'm pretty sure there should be another one where uh, Booker T should be on this list where Triple H, once again, didn't need that win against uh, Booker T. First place, Lesnar would win the blow off inside a cage at the following month's Extreme Rules, but that is not the biggest show of the year, is it? Not. Within the next 18 months, Brock beat CM Punk, Big Show, Undertaker, and John Cena on pay per view, so what stopped Mr. Levesque doing the job on the <clears throat> grandest stage? Mm -hmm. Number nine, Charlotte Flair versus Asuka yep. at WrestleMania 34. This had to be on the list. As well as being a charismatic and talented performer, Asuka was really able to get over with the WWE Universe because she was booked superbly from her blistering NXT run to her earlier main roster days. Mm -hmm. The Empress of Tomorrow never tasted defeat and fans were happy to invest in her because they had confidence that she would get the job done yep. as she had done in the first ever <clears throat> Women's Royal Rumble match, earning herself a women's title match at WrestleMania in the process. Asuka met Charlotte Flair at the Showcase of the Immortals, the two having a great babyface versus babyface bout that was one of the highlights of the show. It the was. pair fought tooth and nail and ably demonstrated why they are two of the best to do it before the queen put away the challenger with a figure eight. Ending Asuka's streak on this night was a huge call to make, but I'm not sure it was the right one. I appreciate that WWE considers Charlotte the top star of the entire women's division and have basically built it around her as the figurehead and consummate champion, but sometimes there's nothing wrong with telling the linear, crowd-pleasing story. No yeah, that, for the life of me, I would never understand that. In my opinion, it did drop Asuka down. Granted, she was still able to keep her momentum in WWE, but for me personally, that really dropped her down because it's like, bro, she lost after I think it was like 700 plus days she hadn't lost, and then she loses. <clears throat> and it's like, if you're mentioning that, you got to capitalize on that. There has to be a reason why you're putting that out there. 
and then you put that out there so Charlotte could be the one to be there. Uh, Charlotte didn't need that rub. That's all I'm saying. Number eight, John Cena <clears throat> versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 30. Oh, yeah, Bray and his one. family of backwards oh, behemoths terrorized the Raw be roster list. upon their arrival and were made to look strong in their battles with Kane, Daniel Bryan, and The Shield, mm -hmm. rarely tasting a loss, and if they did, being allowed to get their heat back in some form or fashion after the fact. The Eater of Worlds targeted squeaky clean John Cena in the run-up to WrestleMania, a natural rivalry Good. between contrasting personalities. I was enjoying the build-up to WrestleMania. I was, I was hoping... They didn't make the right decision. They didn't, y'all. Seas and styles. Their match was a decent one and told an interesting story, but the outcome left a lot to be desired as Cena overcame whatever inner turmoil he was battling and disposed of not only Luke Harper and Eric Rowan at ringside, but also dropped Bray with a single AA, giving him his first televised pinfall loss. Ideally, Cena would have been sacrificed to the cult leader. Cena is Cena and is pretty much bulletproof, but Bray Wyatt was a hot new act and yeah. needed all the help he could get in establishing himself at the top of the card. He won their next meeting, beating Cena in a cage match at Extreme Rules, which is a lovely silver medal and all, but it's, it's not, not WrestleMania gold. Number seven. It's not the same, man. Imagine a timeline, a world where Bray Wyatt won at WrestleMania 30. He beats John Cena, who can take a loss. He beats John Cena. Imagine that. Imagine what that does for him. He's instantly skyrocketed because now he beat the guy. Like, but how many times have they ruined Bray? Dropped the ball with Bray? Who knows? Seven, Mark Henry versus Ryback at WrestleMania 29. The big guy caught fire in the fall of 2012 and earned mm -hmm. himself a title bout with CM Punk at Hell in a Cell, which he lost in controversial fashion, but that didn't slow him down too much. He, he found his way in the title him. match at Survivor Series a month later, looked great against The Shield in six-man matches, finished up as the runner-up in the 2013 Royal Rumble, and then was booked against Mark Henry at WrestleMania 29. A decisive victory over the world's strongest man then, the perfect opportunity to reheat Ryback, right? Nope. Wrong. Instead, Henry simply fell on top of Ryback as he attempted the shell shock and pinned him clean after a weird disjointed match. The result would have made sense if Henry was the next challenger to champion Cena or Alberto Del Rio, but he wasn't. Because Ryback was, turning heel on the face that runs the place the next night on Raw and kicking off their title feud. Odder still, Ryback was permitted to get some of his heat back following the loss by successfully hitting Henry with the shell shock after the fact. I mean, I'd love to see these two run it back in AEW one day, but sadly, Ryback is officially retired. Number six, oh, damn, Triple H that. versus Booker T. <clears throat> you knew this had to be on there. I, uh, you knew <clears throat> this. You knew this was going to be on the list. You knew this was going to be on the list. This is one of. This should be. This would definitely be number one on my list. If this was my list, definitely would make this number one at WrestleMania 19. Ugh. Oh, you better believe the infamous Triple H reign of terror was real, as after being simply handed the World Heavyweight title mm -hmm. in late 2002, he steamrolled through Rob Van Dam, Kane, yep. Shawn Michaels, and Scott Steiner. There was hope that Booker T, a former yes. five-time WCW champion in his own right, would be the one to unseat the Cerebral Assassin when he earned the right to challenge him at WrestleMania 19. This hope grew when WWE decided to use Booker's troubled past in the build to it, it, mm -hmm. with Triple H, Ric Flair, and Jerry Lawler all making reference to his time spent behind bars while insinuating that people like him weren't meant to be world champ. Mm -hmm. Everyone assumed this was done so the valiant babyface could take that. That's what I'm saying. If you're going to get that, like, racially involved, you got to you gotta capitalize on it. You got to. This was a layup. Oh, if they're pulling this card, they gotta be giving him the belt. On the dastardly heel. Everyone, as it turns <clears throat> out, including Booker himself, who was told that that was the plan right up until the day of the show. Wow. Then, plans changed, pal, and Triple H won clean after hitting a pedigree and taking about four hours to make the cover. There was no reason not to have Booker win here and give him a run with the belt, however brief, because the loss here left a sour <clears throat> taste and seriously derailed his main event's momentum. Number five, The Miz versus 
versus John Cena at WrestleMania 27. A heel retaining his title in the Mania main event is never the preferred ending, especially when it's The Miz, who most people at the time never bought in that spot anyway. Mm -hmm. And while I appreciate this was bang in the middle of the Cena wins lol era and that a section of the fan base was certainly burned out on Big Mash John, <laughs> yep. he should have regained the title on this night. While the manner of the loss was done more to help build to Cena clashing with The Rock at the next year's show, that could have been achieved in any number of different ways. In a perfect world, Cena would have won, then the People's <laughs> Champion could have come to ringside to present him with the title personally, only to drop it before doing so and blast Cena with a rock bottom instead. Cena's your champ, WrestleMania has a happy ending, and you've set the scene for Rock and Cena's year-long rivalry. Naturally, Cena won the title at Extreme Rules the following month in a triple Sounds threat cage right. match with Miz and Morrison, where Miz <clears throat> wasn't even protected and was the man pinned anyway. Number four. I'm going to have to disagree with that. I think the booking on that made sense. <clears throat> it made sense. It, it started his spiral of, you know what I'm saying? It started, you know, I wouldn't say spiral. Uh, I, I want to say it, it, it worked. It worked because he couldn't get the job done against the Miz. So it worked. I like that. Uh, I, I think that should stay the same. I think Miz winning at WrestleMania should definitely stay the same. Triple H versus Sting oh, at WrestleMania 31. On here Though too. we didn't get the expected WrestleMania dream match with The Undertaker, a bout with Triple H, a safe <coughs> pair of hands if there ever was one, was a decent consolation for Sting, the last holdout from WCW. The match itself was good, and the vigilante looked really sharp out there. The extra smoke and mirrors of the DX and NWO run-ins added a memorable element, yeah. and the fans were pretty well into the theatrics of it all until Triple H won. That Wait, what? Triple H won. They had Sting do the job in his first match that against the heel at WrestleMania. Mania, Someone ought to tell Vince McMahon and those making the decisions in that WWE that dumbest. in case they forgot, they actually won the war a long, long yeah, time that was ago. So and stupid. then it's just fine to put the ex WCW guys over once in a while, especially in circumstances like these. That, for the life of me, will always be a mind boggling decision from creative. Just let them win. It's. Come on, bro. It later came Let out him. that the justification for Triple H's win was because they were building to a showdown between him and The Rock the following year, but those plans were eventually nixed. Sorry, Stinger. Number three, Santina Morella at done. WrestleMania 25. <laughs> Obviously, things are much better now as far as the opportunities that female performers are given and how they are positioned on the card. Mm -hmm. Women have main evented pay-per-views, including WrestleMania, have had their own pay-per-view, and now have their own versions of the Royal Rumble match, and so on. These are positive steps and have done much to help soften the memory of the fairer sex's previous mistreatments. Who An example of this mistreatment is the way that the women were used <laughs> at WrestleMania 25, Bathroom where just matches. about every female on the roster, as well as some names from the past, was stuffed into the Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal, but were really there to make goo-goo eyes at Kid Rock. Nobody really got a chance to shine in the 25-person melee, but what could have been a real mania moment for someone like Beth Phoenix, Melina, or Michelle McCool <laughs> ended up being an unfunny punchline featuring Santino Marie in drag. The whole Santino saga was lamentable and showed just how behind the times Cringe. and painfully unfunny WWE could be Cringe. in the PG era. There was something very <laughs> satisfying about seeing the character get booed out of the building when it made an unwelcome return in the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble match. Cringe. Number two, Triple so H versus The Rock versus The... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Triple H is in all these damn clips should let you know Triple H was winning so many matches he shouldn't have fucking won. Big Show versus Mick Foley <laughs> at WrestleMania 2000. Oh my god! The main event of WrestleMania 2000 oh. had all sorts of bells and whistles and a McMahon in every corner. Uh -huh. Truth is, it was a little too overstuffed. It didn't need to be a four-way elimination deal. Hell, Big Show and Mick Foley didn't really need to be there either. And the world could have lived without every single McMahon getting in. Involved. Ideally, it would have been the Rock and Triple H squaring off one on one. The Brahma Bull should have beaten the game to capture the WWE mm -hmm. title on the night, too. When the match came down to the two of them, the smart money said that that would be the outcome. Of course, there's no such thing as smart money in wrestling, and Helmsley got his hand raised after Vince predictably turned on his man. Mm -hmm. And so Hunter walked out as the first heel to have successfully defended his WWE title at WrestleMania. There is a first time for everything, true, but. 
it shouldn't have been here. No. Typically, The Rock won the title in a far better match the following month at Backlash. Number one, Brock Lesnar. Oh, thank God it's not Triple H. Brock Lesnar <laughs> versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. Oh, wow. It is perhaps the most controversial booking decision yes, in professional is. wrestling history. <clears throat> and while I can see the merit in the arguments of both ending and maintaining Undertaker's WrestleMania winning streak, I think that, on balance, having Brock go over him at WrestleMania 30 was the wrong call in the end. Mm -hmm. It was a timeless moment, no doubt, but if anyone didn't need the honor to enhance their credibility, it was it's Brock. Brock. Lesnar was already well decorated by the time the match happened, and fans knew that he was the real deal. The if not him then who validation doesn't wash well, because who said the streak needed to be broken in the Max. first place? Going into the bout, nobody believed that the Beast Incarnate had a hope of winning, and that, coupled with a so-so match not helped by the Phenom suffering an early concussion, resulted in very little heat for the match itself. Yeah, uh, I am one of those people that believe the streak shouldn't have ended. At least not ended with Brock. There's only one person I feel like the streak should have ended for, and that's probably Roman Reigns. Only, and I mean this, only if they were going to turn him heel. That's it. That's it. And when the streak ends, he retires from wrestling. That's it. I'm being dead ass. Being dead ass. No one should have beat, not Brock. Brock didn't need the streak to be over, to be the next contender, the next guy up. So he didn't need the streak. All I'm saying is, if Roman, because Roman wasn't, I want to say around that time Roman was good, you know, saying so he was getting over, but the way they were shoving him down our throats and stuff, like, if that's how you do it, it has to get somebody over in a Whoever beats him automatically is going to be a heel at that point. So I would have been thinking, okay, <clears throat> we're not getting Roman over as a face. Let's try him going against The Undertaker and then get him over as a heel. Or you could have gave it to Bray Wyatt at some point. Get him over as the new face of fear. If you're going to do it, you got he has to retire and there has to be a new star that's going to benefit from it. Or just don't have them lose it at all. That's all I'm saying. So, but comment down below. Let me know which one of these uh, scenarios really uh, kind of got, you know, grinded your gears, as they would say. For me, it will always be the Triple H and Booker T one because of the racial, you know, racial tension they were going with with that angle. That one always will forever grind my goddamn gears. That that. Booking finish was awful, and also the one with uh, Steam at, and Triple H at WrestleMania. Did not like that. So, appreciate all of the support. Roll to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.